Matthew 18, 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Mark 10, 35 through 37. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. You travel to Acts chapter 1, verse number 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Hello, my name is Bob Gray II. I am your host for this episode of the Church Culture Podcast. Many of you have seen the Church Culture Podcast promo that has been airing for many weeks now. In the promo, I spoke of kingdom building or building people. Had no idea that it would elicit emotions from so many people, both good and, may I say, interesting. Like the disciples, we too want to preserve our place in history. It's only normal through our position rather than fulfilling our purpose of serving people. Jesus spoke to this. In the book of Acts, the disciples were waiting for the kingdom to come. They thought it would come right then, not realizing that the people of Pentecost were waiting on the love of God to get to them just 10 days later. I think the difference in church work today and that of Acts chapter 2 is that those of Acts chapter 2 had no idea that some people would make this the standard, the numbers rather than the responsibility. In this episode of the Church Culture Podcast, we will explore the different aspects of the church that would trend toward kingdom building rather than building people. The reason this is such a passion of mine at this stage of my life and ministry is partly due to my journey as a spiritual leader for the past three and a half decades. Unfortunately, there was a time when I was more interested in how I looked in ministry, kingdom building, rather than how the people of God were being ministered to, regardless of how I fared, people building. There is a constant battle for any spiritual leader to keep our focus on the sheep and not how we look as a shepherd. When I refer to kingdom building, I am referring to any talking points that would build up a man in methods more than meeting the needs of the people God has given us to love and serve. We always must remember the man and the methods will vary according to the several abilities given to us by God and according to the culture God has placed us in to serve. However, what will never change is taking the love of God and loving the people of God. I am convinced that the sheep are smart and can sense when a pastor or a church is more interested in them as a number rather than a member of the family of God. When we return, we will meet the pastors of Emmanuel Baptist Church and uh, we get to explore the mindset of not kingdom building, but loving people. I think you will enjoy the next segment. Stay tuned. Hey, it's Pastor Gray. Welcome back from the break. And I'm sitting here with our pastors of Emmanuel Baptist Church. We're in the auditorium and uh, this is from the platform. Here's where we uh, preach God's word, sing God's word. And I truly believe that a uh, kingdom building mindset versus people building, that it all starts with the pastor and the pastoral leadership. And then it trickles down to the people in the pew and then how they receive it, how they embrace it. It then becomes who they get to be in the community. So it's just a trickle down effect. So we're just going to have a discussion here this, the, the, today. But I want to thank you for joining us and for kind of hanging in there with us in this first episode. Been a long time coming. Uh, but we finally are here. All right, guys, here we go. When I say kingdom building, people building. So you got to jump in. The first time you heard a term like that, what was the first thought? One of the first beginning thoughts. Well, um, I'll say that as far as kingdom building and people building, those were, aside from the building the kingdom of God being different. Sure. These were, uh, diff I didn't hear these until probably about seven or eight years ago. Um, and at the it's something that I was practicing at, at where I came from and uh, as far as people building, just didn't have a term for it. And kind of learning more about what the term means and the specifics of, of it all, um, I've really come to love and understand and try to do my best in ministry to be that way. So when I hear people building, I think of not focusing on the numbers, the masses, but more focused on the people as individuals and how I can help them in their spiritual walk as much as possible. Uh, again, not focusing on just the grand scheme of things, but more on the individual. 
So for you as a children's pastor, how does that translate into, because you're talking about children, right? They have no idea sometimes what's going on, but yet they are very smart. And uh, so how does that translate into the children's ministry? So for the children's ministry, uh, again, like you said, most of them, they either are coming from somewhere where they've never heard the gospel before, or they're hearing it all for the first time because they're growing up in it. Um, I really try to slow down and and answer their questions when they have questions, try to explain it and over explain it sometimes uh, just to make sure they get it because my biggest concern would be that I rush through something, especially something like the gospel, and they end up missing the point. They end yeah. up uh, thinking it's about the words that they're pray that they're saying rather than the, the belief in their heart. So I really try to slow it down, take it on an individual approach um, to really work with each individual. What questions do you have? Do you understand this? What What do you think this means? And kind of work it off of off of what they know to come down to where they understand it, and they could describe it to you in their own words exactly what they describe, rather than just reciting what. I okay. Okay, what about the rest of you? First time you heard kingdom building, people building, the difference between the two, how did it impact you? Well, kingdoms have kings. And uh, of course, who is the head of the church? Jesus Christ is the head of the church and uh, we are his body. Uh, there's just a lot of local bodies and pastors can sometimes interject themselves between God and um, and the flock as um, as the leader of the kingdom and yet a good pastor as you have done will point to Christ as having the preeminence and that's uh, very rare uh, but it's so needed. Yeah, because on our wall is our core values and, and that very first one is very important, the preeminence of Christ yes. and, and it is, it is very much so. All right. I think I agree with Brother Ethan, you know, that uh, it is, it's a lifestyle you live, and then when you hear the term, it's like, oh yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that building people is 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 way more important than than it being about buildings or, uh, you know, a a a, a type of, of you know uh, trying to make it about someone other than Jesus Christ, and uh, being able to present Him to a person and help that person. Uh, with their own life, and that person reaches another person, and and so on from there. I mean, that's that's what you see in in the Bible. So uh, I, I I think that for me it was a lifestyle. And then when you hear the term, and it's interesting that you know it's it's easy to uh, see when you hear it, and and someone's maybe more focused on on the kingdom building side. It's it's easy to tell. That it's like, hey, you know, for me, when when you've either done, you know, I, I've even at times got more focused on the kingdom. Yeah, I, I've even had to come back and say, no, that's that's not what Christ would want for that person. And uh, you know, and I think that starts with your relationship with the Lord and being able to focus that, you know, when Christ was here, he was so focused on the people he was touching. I mean, he could have he could have established the kingdom right then, but he, he was he was more focused on building the people because when he left, he left the Holy Spirit. It, it, they knew exactly this is what we're doing. We're we're preaching the gospel. We're we're taking this to people because he brought it to us. So I mean, I, that's something that I've been able to hearing the term and then looking at it and trying to live it. Uh, it's it's challenge. It's a big it thing to do, but uh, I believe that's for me. I I enjoy that part of it. Yeah, so. yeah. Because we live it every day. We live it every week. Everything we do is defined by this building is not here for us, right? None of this is here for our advancement. It's it's all about the people that God has given us. Well, brother Miave, brother Smith. At, at the end of the day, it is very much just a honest biblical approach. You know what I mean? And that's all it is. It's even people that sometimes stray away from it. That's that's the nice hopeful part about it is that if we were honest, not even and yeah, we want to encourage each other, but if if you were just to take a just an honest biblical look at it and let's start going that way, like was mentioned, even before you even know the terms, you'll start going that way anyways. You know what I mean? And, and you're if you're honest with the scriptures, honest with God's heart then you'll, you'll end up here. You'll end up there. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right, Brother Smith. I believe people know if you're genuine or not. I think we've all heard sermons at different times in our life where a sermon really connects with us and we say, wow, that he's speaking to me. And we've also heard sermons where this guy is putting on a, a spiritual show. And I think if we can focus on the fact that we're preaching to people, we're trying to help them, we're trying to build their life, it'll, it's, it's received that way. And uh, it's very, well, the correct word would be, it's, I won't say repulsive, it's, it's a very negative thing when you sit and re- a leader or sit in a, an, a sermon to where it seems like it's all about the speaker, it's not about the people. Yeah. If we can focus on them yeah. and remember that, it, it comes across mm-hmm. much better. Yeah. So, so the white elephant in the, in the middle of the room, right? The, the, the thing in the middle of the room that always brings about a, okay, what is going on? And unfortunately, I think I bring that to any room, right? But especially this narrative, correct? So what are the misconceptions do you believe or you've heard that when we go, we're, we're, we're going to be interested in people, right? We're, we're going to focus on people. What are those misconceptions that you hear that you're like that if you could only it, you could only see it in action that that's just not true what would be those misconceptions when somebody says okay so let me get this straight when you say you're not building a kingdom but you're building people does that mean you don't care about god you don't care about his kingdom so this is one of those hot topics that sit right there in the middle of the room so i think first off like if i were to baptism is a big one right because people get saved they got to get baptized like right away and i think that sometimes we don't let them grow into making that decision for themselves okay so with this facet of what you just said about baptism absolutely it is a misconception and um because we do care about the command of baptism you know and well, um, so it's something that, you know, in my personal Bible reading and studying baptism, Jesus got baptized at 30. He could have got baptized sooner. Why didn't he? It's perfect timing. That was when it was time for him to get baptized. He knew it. And so I think a lot of times we pressure into, well, do it, do it now. You need to make the decision now. And they don't even understand to a point. What, what am I making the decision for? And we're to, being baptized, walk in newness of life, understanding that it is a picture of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And then when someone decides to get baptized, they are following him in obedience and a clear conscience. The mm-hmm. scripture does talk about that too. Um, but just having that, that one-on-one conversation of, do you understand what, what decision you're making? Are you ready to make that? And I love the fact that we do make it a big deal that, hey, bring your family. Make this something that people can see your decision to follow Christ in this step. So I, I think that's just one for me. That... Uh, absolutely. Anybody else with that misconception? Uh, I would say based even before the baptism, which I would agree with that, that it's a misconception that we're not pushing for baptism. Then again, because they need to understand why they're being baptized before they get baptized. Um, but I would go back to even the salvation of it. It's like when you're focused on the people, again, you want to make sure they understand salvation before you do a one, two, three, repeat after me. Oh, you, you, you said those words and, is, and I'm, you believed in your heart, you're good. but we don't actually verify. We don't actually try. And of course, no one can look at the heart except for God, Right. but doing our due diligence to make sure it has been explained and that we're not coercing or forcing or manipulating because we, with our, with our charisma, the the to get them to profess something that they don't fully understand and i'm not saying they have to fully understand creation and eternal security and all that to be saved they need to understand the simple truth that i'm a sinner jesus christ died for me and i want to go to heaven so i'm trusting jesus to save me from my sins Mm -hmm. and just that simplicity but making sure they understand that so because of that especially in the children's ministry um i'm very careful with with witnessing to the children and of course not going to hold the gospel back from them but i am going to be really careful as like, do you understand this and go through the questions and ask them and have them ask me questions just because I don't want them to n- not fully understand or misunderstand 
and make a profession of faith that, that they didn't truly mean or get to where years down the road they're confused about it. And of course, you can't protect against 100% of that, but you can, again, do your due diligence yeah. to work on that. And I think that is a thing is where where some may say, I've we have 100, 100 kids, 200 kids saved a year, whatever, I'm just throwing arbitrary numbers out. But And where I have a fewer number, and again, because it's not about the number, but yes, I'm working to see children saved and I'm praying for these children or I'm working for them, but I may not see as many uh, make the professions of faith. Yeah. So I think that can be a misconception is that we're not as zealous of getting the gospel or getting people saved as maybe the kingdom building would be. Yeah. I think I would jump in at this point and tell you one of the Achilles heels, right, a focus on people's apathy. It, it is the Achilles heel because here's why. You drop to the level of a baby growing rather than stay at the level of a commitment to the gospel, Right. Because it is very easy to, to watch babies grow and think that, okay, they're taking their time to grow. I can take my time to go. And that's not true. And so one of the things that I've had to fight against is the apathy, right? And the lack of. And while I'm working with people, the harvest is still dying and going to hell. And that's why the Bible says the laborers are few. So, so, so where mm -hmm. you, you have to slow down because you're at the mercy of the people. You know, RG, he, um, <laughs> bless his heart, there's no way he could keep up intellectually. So I had to slow down, but I found myself, um, a couple of months before he passed, I found myself treating Kelly like I did RG, <laughs> right? Do you understand? <laughs> and Kelly was like, Bob, there's nothing wrong with me, right? And I think with the gospel, the gospel sits here as the medicine to the masses that sometimes that the Achilles heel of people building is, is that you, you go down to where as the people are growing at a slow rate, we slow the gospel down. The gospel is still supposed to go. And... Um, Brother Miyabi? Yeah, no. So your answer is pretty much what you what you said. So I wasn't going to bring up a misconception, but definitely a danger. And I was going to bring danger. that that danger up is that it it doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't no. have to be. No. It can be both it's and both. and like and you know historically we we've, we've been uh, at the forefront of being creative and being excited and. Why? Because once again, you know that 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 this is the truth. So you know it, it it can be disheartening to like like you're saying, if if you if you let the flame die, you know. But at it's it's a it's a multi pronged command: preach, baptize, teach. You know, disciple all all nations yep. all the time. Yep. And you know, and so. He wants all of it done. He wants all of it done, um, and and it's and it's interesting. Like so, you can um, you can be working with somebody, and then and you can go at a at a slower pace, but realizing that there's more people just like him, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> you know. And it's like if you if you put more time into it, you can still be honest with it and be like, okay, if I'm honest with myself, if I wouldn't have put in more time, I wouldn't have been able to meet this person, right? And, and you know, and, and, and afternoons and evenings and and it's like, OK, you know, we can do more. We can do more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely can do more. Anybody else? Yeah, I believe it really comes down to prayer. A lot of times we do things on our own power. We do things with our our own method, our own plan. We've got a, our system worked out and we forget to pray and say, Lord, help mm -hmm. me to find somebody today that I can share the gospel with, whether it's a gospel track, whether it's a conversation. Because as you get older, you're, you pray for your children. You certainly pray for your grandchildren as they yeah. begin to get to the age of accountability. Of which you and I are the only two grandfathers. And they'll be there one day. Yes, they will. <laughs> but oh. uh, it's it's the prayer I pray every day for my kids. Or well, I should say for my grandkids. Help them to understand. Help them to have a heart that's tender to the gospel. Help them to just want to be saved when they're old enough to understand. 
So if I can pray that way for my grandkids, uh, he could pray that way for his children's church ministry, uh, boys and girls. We could pray that way for the members of our church and the people that we meet on a daily basis. Amen. It's yeah. just being yeah. concerned enough to remember somebody other than just me. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's two, two things with the gospel. I think one is the command of it, right? And then the commission of it. I think the command of it would come down to each of us individually. The commission of it would be the old ship of Zion is being commissioned. This is what we do. The church exists for the gospel and to get the gospel out. So I know the misconceptions are out there. And I, I think sometimes the hit that is taken are they're, they're valid concerns, right? Are you going? Does, does, does a church that's about people, how zealous are you? And for me, it comes down to soul winning. Gospel giving is a way of life. It's not an event, right? The thing that makes football stadiums amazing, because each of them individuals are fanatics in their own house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? They are constantly in their fantasy football. And when they get together, it's like, this is a frenzy. And I think when every believer is a fanatic of the gospel individually, and it is a lifestyle we live, we keep tracks with us. We don't pass up an opportunity to talk to somebody about the Lord. Then when we come together corporately and go, you now are doing with your friends what you love to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the best fellowship I've had is out soul winning and out knocking doors because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so any other misconceptions that you think that come along with that are just aren't true? Now, the dangers are there. The dangers are very much there. Well, that, that probably also the misconception of um, that to do this, you're abandoning, uh, you know, biblical, not standards, but. I get it. Uh, that you're approaching it more of a liberal mindset. You know what I mean? And, and once again, it doesn't have to be. I, and, I, and I think that if you were to take a consensus across the board, right, of people who focus on people, you have to let them grow through stages, okay? So as they're growing through their sanctification, oh, gotcha. right? And as they're, they're coming to terms and grips with something else in their life that needs to be omitted, mm -hmm. something else in their life that they need to add. Even we do that as pastors. That's how we grow because we have not arrived. We haven't closed the book on our spiritual growth. And God bless people who are getting saved and they're just, they're just now finding out that the Bible speaketh expressly against that. Mm -hmm. And to them that I i don't even think twice about doing that. And I love it when members come up and go, uh, so I'm not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> like just the other day when I said that the, 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 the church, a Bible pattern for church attendance is, is midweek service, mm -hmm. right? Well, one of the members heard me say that. And they were like, where? And so I showed them in Acts chapter 1, 40 days after his resurrection, falls right in the middle of the week. They were like, so you're telling me every Wednesday night I'm staying home. I'm supposed to be assembling. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be assembling. You come on. I think my issue is not the new believers coming this way. I think it's those who have already tasted, already partook, have already lived Hebrews chapter 5. They're turning around going the other way yeah, that's right. when we all should be growing. And I think that's where the gospel. So those are the misconceptions. Hey, thanks for being with us on this uh, inaugural Church Culture podcast. We uh, just finished discussing about the misconception, what kingdom building is, what does it mean to us. And we're going to continue the conversation here in the auditorium, uh, which will be the next episode. And we're going to get into how does kingdom building, people building, um, how does it translate into leadership? So we now know that sometimes kingdom building, people building brings with it as pros as cons, but how does a mindset trans translate into me as a leader and, uh, and the men who lead our church and maybe even you. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.